Hi, my name is Jake and I'm a technical consultant at Pragmatic Solutions. In this video today, we are going to look into Customer Voice, a feedback management service built by Microsoft. Customer Voice allows you to create and send surveys using its user-friendly unified interface, as well as effortlessly track the responses. It is designed to provide a more complete view of relationships with stakeholders, enhance insights that will lead to better experiences and allow businesses to make more informed decisions. I'm now going to demonstrate how to build and send a survey using Customer Voice. So let's get started. To open Customer Voice, simply head to office.com and sign in with your credentials. In the top left hand corner, you will see nine small circles. Select this and then select all apps to bring up a list of your available Microsoft applications. Select customer voice. An alternative way to open customer voice is to enter customervoice.microsoft.com into the URL at the top. In order to create a survey, you must first create a project. A project can be thought of as an overarching folder that customer voice surveys exist within. Every project must be connected to an existing Dataverse environment. To create a new project, select all projects on the left hand navigation to be provided with a list of your existing projects. Then select new project in the top right hand corner to create a new project. You will then be provided with a list of different templates. In this example, we will select a blank. Select the Dataverse environment that you would like the project and survey to exist within. Select Create to create your new survey. Once created, you'll be presented with a, the Survey Designer screen. We can split the design of a survey into two distinct parts. First, question design. What questions will we ask? How will they be structured? And what logic will there be? Secondly, the overall styling of the survey. What colour should we use? Should we use images? And what font should we use? In this example, we will create a simple order feedback survey for our fictitious company Incubate. To edit the title of your survey, simply click on the existing text and enter the information you would like to display. To create a new question, select Add New underneath. Once selected, you will be given the option for the question type. Question types govern how a user can respond to the question. In this example, we will use three different question types. Firstly, we will ask for a rating to ask for their ease of ordering. Secondly, we will ask for a net promoter score, which is a defined question asking how likely they are to recommend to a friend or colleague and can be used as a metric for the overall satisfaction of the user. Thirdly, we will ask for a text for any additional feedback. We will also make this additional feedback a long answer, allowing the user to enter more text. Some other additional things to point out is that each question will always have two different toggles. The two different toggles are whether the question should be required and whether it should be visible. Microsoft also provide functionality to define branching logic on your survey. With branching logic, you are able to show, hide or skip questions depending on a user's answer to one or more previous questions. To define branching logic, select branching in the customizations pane on the right hand side. Now, let's consider the styling of the survey. There are two main areas to check here. The first area is the branding section of the customizations pane on the right hand side. In here, we can alter the entire survey's design. Three different options is the theme color, allowing you to change the color of the entire survey, including all buttons and background. Secondly, is to change the fonts, the header fonts, other title and different headers. 
and the bodies are the questions and the responses. Finally, we can even upload a background image. The second area to check is in the title. By hovering over the title, you'll be given a selection of four different options as well as an undo button. The first option, style, lets you choose from preset design templates. The second option, theme, allows you to change the theme color of the survey as seen in the branding section. The third option allows you to choose an image which, which gets uploaded to the header in the title. This can be one of the preset uncopyrighted images provided by Microsoft or you can even upload your own. Lastly, you can upload your logo. After completing the styling, we are almost ready to send off the survey. The only thing left to check, which I would recommend, is to use this preview button in the top right hand corner. By selecting preview, you will enter the screen that your customers will see when being sent this survey. Once you are happy with the design and feel of your survey, it is a good time to define your satisfaction metrics. You can get to the satisfaction metric metrics from the right hand customization pane and the satisfaction metrics. Satisfaction metrics provide a useful way to report on the satisfaction of your recipients. Out of the box, Microsoft comes with three different satisfaction metrics. Net Promoter Score is useful to measure customer loyalty and can only be applied to MPS type questions such as number two. Sentiment groups text-based questions into three distinct groups by using machine learning to identify a recipient's sentiment or feelings written in the text. These three different groups are positive, negative and neutral. Finally, CSAT is a measure of the overall satisfaction of a user and can only be applied to rating questions such as question one. Finally, it is possible to create your own custom satisfaction metrics by combining responses from multiple different questions. To create a new satisfaction metric, simply select in the customizations pane on the right hand side and then satisfaction metrics and add metrics. You'll then need to select what satisfaction metric you would like to add as well as what question it relates to. Select save and then you can repeat this for as many satisfaction metrics as you would like. Once you've defined your satisfaction metrics and are happy with your survey, you are now ready to send it to your recipients. To send your survey, select the Send tab in the top left hand corner of the design screen. This will present you with options to send out your survey. By default, Microsoft provides you with five different sending options. Firstly, automation allows you to leverage Power Automate, Microsoft powerful automation tool, to send and receive surveys without any manual intervention. Secondly, email allows you to manually send emails with a link to the survey to known recipients. Finally, the three options, embed code, link, and QR code below, allow you to send a direct link to a survey to potentially anonymous users. However, keep in mind that if you use one of these three options, you will not be able to limit your survey to only internal users. What I mean by that is that if you select the customizations pane on the right hand side of the send screen and go to distribution settings, you will be given a list of different settings that you can change to customize your survey to fit your needs. In the participant section, there is an option here that will only allow people in your organization to respond. Another very useful setting in this is whether to save the survey progress. This will allow the recipient to complete part of the survey and then come back at a later date within the next 28 days. For the rest of the process, we are going to send a survey via email. Upon selecting the email button, you will enter an email design screen. In here, you can design custom templates. To create new templates, simply select the template option at the top and then select create new. Give it a name.
Once you've given it a name, you can edit as much as you would like inside this email design screen using the rich text editor that is provided. Some useful things to consider is in the insert option at the top of this email design. Two useful ones here is in the personalized variables which relate directly to the recipient as well as to include the first question of the survey as can be seen here. Once you're happy with the design of your template, you are now ready to send it. To send, simply enter the recipient's email into the email, into the recipient's box here. Alternatively, you can bulk import a database of contacts using the import contact button on the right. To see the guidelines for the import, simply press guidelines. Great, your survey is now complete. Simply press send to send out the survey. Once you've sent your survey, you'll be presented with a screen that looks like this. In this screen, you'll be provided with a Sankey diagram that maps the statuses of your current sent surveys. To resend the email, simply press resend in the top left. Now, being able to send a professional survey is great, but it is not of much use if you can't see the responses. To see your survey's responses, select your survey's name under the reporting area in the left-hand navigation. This will present you with some useful metrics for the breakdown on each question. You can also drill down into specific responses by, spe by selecting the respondents pane on the right and clicking into the response you would like to see. Sending and receiving surveys is an extremely useful tool for understanding your customer base and thus improving your business. However, what sets customer voice apart from all of its competitors is its seamless integration with Dynamic 365. In Dynamic 365, you are able to access all customer voice survey invites and responses. You are also able to send surveys directly from Dynamics 365. To do this, head to the record you would like to send the customer voice survey to. If the customer voice app has been successfully added to your Dataverse environment, you have a button at the top that reads Send Survey. Select this, then select the survey you would like to send, the email template, and then the locale and select Send. Another powerful tool that sets customer voice apart is its Power Automate connector. Here, I have set up a simple Power Automate flow to automatically send the customer voice survey we designed earlier when an order is completed. As we can see, a new customer, Joe Bloggs, has recently put in a new order for Armband 100. Once the order is completed, the Power Automate flow will trigger and send him an email with the survey that we created. If we fill order as completed, status reason will change to complete. If we head out here, and as we can see here, the flow has successfully run. The other possible action that comes with the customer voice connector is to detect when a response comes in, allowing you to automatically manipulate, create or delete data in your Dataverse environment based on the customer's response. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions or want to learn more about customer voice, you can contact us via email using sales at pragmaticsolutions.co.uk or you can call us on 01908 038 110 or head to our website at www.pragmaticsolutions.co.uk